Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 267 for Monday, August 10th, 2020. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians here, back here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. You're here for the last time in San Jose, California. It's Paul Kent. I know. We're, uh, we're, we're nomadic fools. I mean, I mean, I went to Vermont for five days, so it wasn't that big of a deal. You're actually moving. That's yeah, exciting. Yeah, it's a time of change, Dave. Yeah, yeah so we finally got the call and our house is ready for us. So we're moving on Friday, and the next time we do this show, I'll be from my new studio slash office slash hangout place. That's exciting, man. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's been a long time waiting for this thing to be ready for us. Yeah. That's exciting. Wow. Very cool, man. Very good. I can't wait to hear. So, and then along with that is, you know, starting to f figure out the music scene down there. I mean, there, I had originally intended to try and like do some initial networking and stuff, but when everything shut down, you know, we're, we're yeah. nobody's working and you know it's hard it's hard to say hey i'm new put me to the top of the list <laughs> when you haven't been booking your normal guys you know thing so it, i'm just gonna have to take it slow and like when you moved from austin so you moved to connecticut first right yeah well i mean i so i moved from connecticut to austin to connecticut to new hampshire so i've done this a few times but the, wait for the austin to connecticut did you move to roughly the same place you were in before you left Connecticut? Yes uh, and no. We were about an hour away from where we had lived previously, but all of the people that I had played with had sort of moved on. So there were anybody that I encountered, everything was, it, all the gigs that I was going for were new, but I had the benefit of saying, oh, well, you know, oh, you've played with Bill Bussing. I play with Bill Bussing, you know, and like being able to sort of name drop people that would vouch for me. You know what I mean? Like to, to build that trust. So it wasn't quite brand new when I moved to Connecticut, but it was brand new enough that I had to I had to work, you know, to make it happen. Yeah. And then when we came up here, obviously, you know, that was. Completely. So give me some tips. What what did you do? What was your process? Did you just, did you Craigslist it? Did you just, uh, you know, did you go to open mics? Did you, you know, how, how did you start your networking? Everything. Um, I have found for me, and this is going to sound all like woo woo and whatever, but it, it works for me. If I am looking for gigs, no matter what paths I'm trying, right. And I'll happily tell you about the paths. If I'm not playing my drums every day, the gigs never, like the phone never rings. As soon as I start, because I've gone through this where it's like, oh, you know, I just got set up. Well, I, I, I'm busy. You know, I just moved in, uh, you know, got a million things going on. I got to find a new doctor and, a, you know, whatever. And, yeah. you, you know, like those things, it's easy to take two weeks off, right, from, from playing, like without even thinking about it. As soon as I start playing my drums, that's when the phone starts to ring. And I'm sure it's not some weird law of the universe I'm sure it's that by by making be, being intentional about that, I'm paying a little bit more attention to the things that then, you know, kind of push me in the right direction to to scrounge up some gigs. I, I, I would yeah. assume it's that whole that which is monitored is managed, you know, philosophy. Right. So <laughs> just playing like that's all it was. And I, and I remember it's happened a couple of times, but like the gig when I finally got the gig to play with the responders in Connecticut. I was like looking and just like nothing. I was like, man, because down there in most places in the country, drummers are in high demand. Right. And you can just write your own ticket. In Austin, it was super easy for me to just play with everybody. And I like totally fine. In Connecticut, there's it, like every drummer that's there is fantastic. And there are a <laughs> lot of them. So you like sure. real competition. I'm like, I was getting, you know, disgruntled and, and bummed out. I'm like, you know, I just got to get past this. I just got to play and I just got to enjoy playing, even if it's by myself. And as soon as I started doing that, like the, the, you know, the universe sort of melded quite frankly, the same kind of thing just happened, you know, over the last couple of months with, um, 
with being quarantined. It was like, yep, I'm just going to enjoy playing myself. And then it was like, wait, these little opportunities to, to, you know, find relatively safe ways to do gigs sort of started to materialize. So, um, so you I do so kind of make your own reality, right? You make your own reality. That's right. Yeah. Now in terms of, but you can't just do that. Cause if you just do that, like literally no one's going to know except your neighbor. And if, unless your neighbor is, you know, you'd be very fortunate that your neighbor was say, in my case, a guitar player looking for a drummer. Most of the time it's somebody that wants to call the police because you're playing the, the drums too loud at night, you know? Um, so, uh, short of that, I highly recommend Craigslist both, um, I do two things, put a post out there, but also build a couple of Craigslist searches so that, uh, you are getting email notifications anytime someone mentions whatever it is you want to do. So, you know, in your case, guitar player needed, right? And for me, I put drummer and I have various little, you know, a bunch of different Craigslist searches, which you can turn on and off at any time. So anytime I'm looking for like a drum set or something, I just turn on my search and then boom. Or if a friend is looking for a drum set, I'm like, ah, let me turn those searches back on. It opens up the floodgates. They appear in my email box. And that way I don't have to scrounge Craigslist every day. It mm. delivers them to me and I can sort of parse through, but I'm also getting the notifications, you know, very quickly and it's pushed to me in that sense. So, uh, so I highly recommend doing, I guess they call them saved searches or something on, right. on Craigslist, but that, that's a huge, um, a huge benefit. You got to also find in some areas of the country, there are overlaps in the different Craigslist sub sites, you know, like, like here we have nh.craigslist.org and also mm -hmm. ma.craigslist.org. And there's a lot of the, you know, New Hampshire, Massachusetts seacoast that's sort of covered by both. So just be, be a little bit, um, when you're doing your exploration, look and find out where the activity really is on Craigslist because it might sure. not be in the one, like for me, it would be obvious to say, well, I want New Hampshire gigs. The first band I found up here was through a Massachusetts Craigslist thing. And we, our first gigs were in New Hampshire. So it wasn't, they all happened to live in Massachusetts, but you know, playing up and down the seacoast was, was sort of normal. So I'm kind of going to be more, um, so remember, I, I can, I have one option that you don't have is I can go out and get in solo gigs. Right. And that's kind of yeah. the way I'm going to start this. And I yep. have enough of a circle of friends that are probably the first couple of things I do. I know I can get a pretty good draw to start the process of building a, to building an audience down sure. there. So that, that's one of the things I'm going to do is, you know, just find the places that are a good fit for me and, you know, kind of do those things probably go hang out at the local guitar store, you know, yep. get a, get a setup or something like that. And just ask those guys what's going on. And, but um, yeah, it, it's weird. Cause I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm a little intimidated by it. I have no idea how to gauge. And actually that's the other question I was going to ask. So you've lived in, you've lived in Austin, right? Yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> was the, was the talent level noticeably different from one place? Like you just said, drummers are great in Connecticut. Yeah. And drummers are pretty I good think, around here too. The, the Connecticut's harder to get a gig as a drummer New Hampshire's not not quite as bad, but it ain't as easy as Austin. So, yeah. but in Austin, you know, the perception would be Austin, Nashville, New York, LA. I mean, these are music towns that mm -hmm. uh, that there's a decent pro scene. Um, but is there a lot of bad, you know, wannabe blues in Austin? And there's a lot of those guys, just like everywhere else. There's just like everywhere you know, else. That's yeah. I I didn't experience any percentage difference in the number of, you know, good versus great versus terrible musicians. It's just, there were more musicians in Austin. So there were more great ones and also more terrible ones, um, mm. you know, but, but everywhere I've lived, it's, it's basically been that same, you know, kind of percentage mix. Again, the Connecticut drummer thing is a little, a little weird. Uh, and I have some theories about that, but they're sort of irrelevant. Um, <laughs> Well, there's just been a lot of good drummers. I mean, you're right outside of New York, right? And so yeah. you've got a lot of good teachers in that area. And and I could, it, when I was in Connecticut, I could trace back all the good drummers to like one of maybe four different teachers. And you know, Dave Weckl being on that list of teachers too, right? Like, you know, like those guys, my drum teacher, John Catrone, he and Dave Weckl went to University of Bridgeport together. And there's a couple of guys with them that sort of, you know, owned the teaching area, teaching in that area. And that, you know, it makes a difference when you got really skilled cats. Yeah, exactly. yeah it, makes sense. It, 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 when you see your teacher 
not only was John a fantastic teacher, but he was also gigging all the time. And when you see that, it, you know, it inspires you. You're that's like, your bar. That's, I, that's your, bar. your bar. That's exactly yeah. what it is. It's like, oh, I can't just, you know, I can't just shuffle through this. I got to like, I got to, I got to play because that cat can play. So yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, percentage wise, I have heard from people that have lived in, you know, the, the Nashville, Austin, LA scenario. And even Buddy Gibbons, when he was on the show with us said this, mm -hmm. that LA is where you will find more of the truly A-list players. And he was comparing it to Nashville when, when we were on the show. He says, you'll get good players there. He's like, if you want to see the cream of the crop, LA is where it's at. And and that makes sense, right? Because those those people can get work there, uh, you know, studio work. Well, I don't know about now, but, you know, in normal days, studio work and that sort of thing. You live in LA and maybe a tour takes off from there, it comes back, but you can, you know, you can feed your family quite well if you're, one of those A-list players in LA, whereas in some other cities, A-list players don't necessarily make all that much more than everybody else. And yeah, that, that was a weird conversation. Yeah. And I've heard that from other people too. Um, and in Austin, that was true too. It's like, you know, the gigs all basically played the same. It was just, who were, who were you having the privilege of sharing the stage with? And, yeah. and as you negotiated your way up the the ladder, as it were, or as I negotiated my way up the ladder, it's like, oh, okay, now I'm actually playing with people that can play. Like, aha, mm -hmm. right, this is what I wanted. But, you know, you got to, and that's the thing is you got to take those opportunities. You got to be ready to be that. There was some meme on Facebook the other day I saw where somebody was saying, you know, you can't learn 30 songs for a gig in a day. And, the, you know, the, the meme was hold my beer. And like mm -hmm. you need to like, that's the thing that will get you in because the 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 better players already have their sort of list of people that they call and trust. And you got to just be there for when none of those people that they can call and trust are there. And it's like, well, wait a minute. You know, I heard of Paul. And I saw that he was playing solo at these places and he said he was looking for a gig. Let's give him a shot. Let's see. And then they call you up and they're like, hey, here's our set list. How many of these songs, you know? And the answer is all of them. It doesn't matter what the actual answer is. You tell them all of them and then you get in the woodshed uh, between then and, and downbeat and you figure it out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's it. Yeah. Yep. And those and those gigs, when they work, man, there's nothing quite like you know, walking in and saving the day like that. It's awesome. Yeah. 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 Personally fulfilling the, your teammates love you, yep. you know, it, it, you know, they appreciate the effort for the, totally. you know, the short term thing. So, Hey, thinking about, uh, you know, moving forward into the future, we, I just am watching, uh, in fact, from buddy Gibbons, um, opposed Nam 21 has been canceled. Okay. Which that originally makes sense, they said that's they were going to go on. Yeah. It, well, but that's the interesting thing. So that's January. Yep. However, remember everybody, you know, that thing happening in January, they have to sell all the booths now. And now. All those companies right here and now, That's or, right. you know, even in the past are making decisions about whether they're going to be open and getting people together. And so yeah. I'm sure that that decision is, is largely a function of all the people who take the booth saying, no, not this year. Yeah. It's not a prediction so, of January. It's a, the reality of today that no one's going to. That's gonna, right. No, yeah. And CES is the same thing, right? CES yep. just last week or two weeks ago made the same call. Like, yeah, it's all virtual, you know, for 2021. And everybody's like, oh yeah, the virus is going to be around. That may be true, but that's not their, to your point, that's not their prediction. Their prediction has, it's no prediction. It's, you know, that's they still five months away. So, I mean, I, we're, you know, we're, we doing, we're no learning idea. about this minute by minute, day <laughs> right? by day, week by week. So, but yeah. it's a function in trade shows of all totally. the planning that goes into the trade show yep. is happening now. And probably the people you need to plan with and, you know, conduct business with, they're saying, I can't make a decision. I'm not, then. yeah, I'm not committing that kind of money today. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But I wonder if um, in environments like this, right? So I think about Nam, which is like toy store, you know, Disneyland for musicians, right? Yeah. You wonder if the manufacturers are going to, you know, if, you know, if you're betting that the economy is going to slow down, if you don't have the big boom with all the press to launch your products to, I wonder if 2021 is going to be a slow new products year. Yeah, it, it could be, right? I mean, we've seen that certainly in the tech industry, we've seen sort of a, a slowing of the pace of new products coming out. There's still some things, but it's not quite the same. And I think part of it is, um, 
that well, part of it's that co- many companies were just like shut down for a little while, depending on where you were and and that sort of thing. Especially the R and D parts of of some companies were just you know sort of like put it on hold. We'll f- let's figure this out. Now they're sort of beginning to rekindle or have been. But I think another big part of it is they no longer have all these trade shows and industry events that they need to deliver their new product by. Right. It's like, wait a minute, we have some freedom here. Let's take a little time. And I'm a big fan of deadlines like deadlines are awesome motivators. But uh, but they do often cause I don't want to say before they're ready. Yeah, right. Or 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 scaling back on the on the robustness of a product. It's like, you know, there's uh, there's often conversations about minimum viable product. Well, what's the minimum we can announce? Great. Let's get that out. Settle into the market. Now we can add some features if it's a thing that you can add features to after the fact. Right. You know, so like that MVP, maybe that bar has actually been raised a little now because of, of you no, know, no time pressure, no time pressure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting so thinking, though. Yeah. So thinking about, you know, now we're talking about 2021 and, you know, here's an interesting conversation for you. What, what do you think bands should be doing to use the pandemic time productively Again, we, you know, we have a lot of listeners who are, you know, internationally, certainly who are out and playing again, but there are large parts of this country that are not playing again. Yeah. I mean, even here it's, it's very limited, you know, and I have, I have a story to tell about subbing, but also about canceling a gig. So, but but yeah. Oh yeah. 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 But so, so I know in my band, you know, I said, Hey guys, uh, should we push forward and you know, finish the new material we were starting to work on before we got shut down, you know, what's the best thing to do and and kind of a consensus. So, you know, this is one time where me as a leader, knowing that my ability to affect people's attention spans at a distance like this is going to be pretty limited. So our band said, we're going to pick our, you know, top three hours material and expect everybody to be ready to go on that three hours material. Now we're not going to rehearse for two months before we go back out of it. If we haven't played for nine months or a year. So, so let's all agree this, that you're going to, you're going to skim this stuff, stay fluent on it and be ready to go fairly quickly. Should things change. And, you know, we open up again with me moving. It's not like we can, you know, rehearse for a month or something like that. So, right. Right. So we've got that thing, but what about you? Do you like with fling? Are you guys like, Hey, you know, let's use this time to write material. Let's use this time to, you know, update our set list. Let's, you know, let's th- conceptualize our show. You know, like what, what do you think bands should be doing? Yeah, it's tough. To use this time productively. I, you know, I, I have the benefit of being in, let's say four bands, right? Um, Fling, Monkey Fist, Bitter Pill and Uptown Celebration. Right. And, and every band has been dealing with this differently, but there's some common threads there. And one of the common threads is a, a kind of a, uh, well, it's an effective lethargy, but only but but generally created by the sort of disappointment that we can't do all the things that we want to do. Like we can't get into the same room and play once a week, like even just to rehearse. Obviously, there's, you know, gigs are if if at all available, far few between and even the offers that come in are like, well, sh- should we like, is that a gig we would want to take? And, and there are way more no's than yeses on, on that, by the way, um, you know, as, as we kind of figure this out. So it's this. And, and so then it's, you know, with fling, when we started this, we had, like I said, we seemed like geniuses cause we had just started doing some recording, but we were getting together every week and then just recording separately. And then the getting together every week stopped. Right. And the recording separately slowed way down. And part of it is various different comfort levels with technology, frustration with getting tracks recorded on, 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 you know, uh, on your own can mm-hmm. lead to just like, wow, well, screw it. Like, you, you know, I'm not, I don't want to, that was, I, I tried that for two hours and it didn't work. What do you mean? It didn't work like that kind of thing. And then, you know, but there's, there's not that regular interaction to kind of keep things going. We've been, we've been, you know, doing once every two weeks kind of zoom calls to kind of keep things going, but it's I, the, you know, I, I, I am good at being the cheerleader for a little while. And, and it's been tougher and tougher as like less people have been wanting to be cheer led. 
Um, it's, you know, it's kind of fizzling out. So, and fling, you, you know, people who have listened to the show know that, you know, fling has been on a weird trajectory for a while, ever since Aaron kind of our keyboard player and, and certainly the best vocalist in the band moved, uh, about an hour away. And so not having anything to sort of force the momentum along plus, Everybody suffering from a very varying degrees of anxiety and depression and, you know, all of the things that are going on in our lives that don't have to do with music or do have to do with music. You know, it it makes it tough. Um, Uptown, same kind of thing. We've had Gary has tried to do gigs a couple of times as soon as the concept of like, all right, well, if we're going to do a gig because he runs a restaurant. Uh, where he's got outdoor dining and like could make it all work. So we have the venue. It's a venue that we as a band control. Gary controls it, but you know, it's not an unknown, right? So it's like, okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. But every time, you know, I'll bring up the thing like, okay, if we're going to do this, I want, I, you know, I need to be able to feel safe and I need the crowd to be able to feel safe there. I feel like, you know, I, I know what Gary's doing. The crowd can feel safe like that if they want to. Can't control the people that want to be idiots, but uh, keep them separate from the people that don't. Great. No problem. But every time I bring up, all right, well, let's everybody in the band get tested ahead of the gig. That has kind of put the brakes on it, which is a fascinating little thing to watch happen. Um, so that it should be the easiest thing. It should be, but it's not, you know, um, yeah. I think it will be like, you know, I, I, I've been banging on that, that drum, no pun intended, uh, for, <laughs> for a while now, I see, what you did there. you see what I did there now, especially here testing is, is becoming a whole lot more commonplace. You know, I've had what five tests now, I think, you know, and, and many people have had multiple tests. I mean, I've had them because I've had things that I've been doing and I, I either, it's been, you know, sort of mandated as part of what we're doing, or I've wanted to do it just to make sure that everybody's, you know, um, safe and, uh, you know, all that good stuff. But it's easy, relatively easy to get tests. Results take a little while to get, um, and that's getting a little better. And but that'll that'll continue to get better. You know, now that we're that that's kind of the the routine that we're in, especially around here. Mm -hmm. So I see that particular friction point probably going away, but not necessarily. If you've got somebody in your band that that I assume everybody in my bands, um, this is going to sound wrong. I assume everybody in my bands thinks this is a hoax. They don't, right? Like, I don't mean to say that, but you kind of have to, I have to go in with, all right, what are the hard facts? I, I don't, your feelings on this are irrelevant as long as, you know, you've had a test in the last four days and haven't gone out and we've had the, you know, the transparent conversations because then it doesn't matter if somebody on stage feels like this is a hoax. As long as they played along, that's, I'm fine. Like <laughs> you went yeah. and got the test, like it's all good. So essentially treating everyone as though they don't believe in this and people that haven't been tested, I, I presume that they are infected or I treat them as though they're infected and keep my distance and all that stuff. Like it's, it's doable. Um, but you know, I, I, I think there might be some people that f philosophically are against the concept of testing. And so that could be a huge stumbling block. I don't know if I have any of those in my, in my bands to be, to be honest, just to be yeah. transparent, but it's possible. Right. So, and, and it's, you know, it, I mean, this affects everybody in different ways. So um, the best thing you can do is just keep in contact with each other. Well, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, for most of us, and if you're listening to this podcast, you're you're pretty into your your life as a musician, right? Mm. So if you're if you're if inside you're baseball, playing, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you well you think about playing when you're not playing, right? right? You think about gear, and you think about what gear would make playing even more pleasurable, and you know, so you know, for for most people who are into this, even as a semi professional, maybe especially as a semi professional, yeah, it consumes a certain amount of your headspace on a constant basis, and so that's one of the frustrations of this is like, what do I do with all this? musical energy. Some of us have turned to streaming things. Some have returned to recording things. I know for my band, what I, what I don't want is for the nucleus to start fizzing. Right. Yeah. You know, so, so we've had, you know, three or four, or three scheduled a fourth zoom, you know, touch base where we just, yeah. you know, for just an hang hour out. or two, grab a beer. Just yep. hang out. Yeah. Just yep. check in on everybody and it makes, you know, again, my band's been together a long time. So it just reminds everybody, Oh yeah, this is, this, this is, is why we do this. This is my thing. You know, yeah. this is, I'm a part of this thing. I've helped build this thing. And just keeping people kind of like socially connected, I think is one, 
it, I don't want to call it a strategy, but it's, it's, you know, one tact. I think it's the most important thing right now. Well, that, that's interesting. But you know, my mind is like, all right, should we redesign the the stage setup? Should we, you know, and I've been like, well, why not, you know, redo the set list at this time? Like, let's pick some songs, everybody sure. learn them on their own. You know, and many of the songs we do are not brain surgery. You know, I think that people should, but people's heads are just not into it. And I, and I can't make people's heads be into it. No. People's heads are in worrying about their family, worrying about their health. And, you know, I'm in my little bubble here, my, my wife and I. Yeah. We're safe, you know. We make our rounds, call our daughters, and you know, then then we realize we have you know a few hours every day. I'm not working right now, and so you know, there's there's time for me to think about this stuff. Yes, and and uh, you want to like you've been able I to. Guess. It's it's worth just noting, and I mean you're you're fortunate for this. Not that you haven't had you know your own things to deal with, but you're fortunate that you are able to make time to be positive about music during this. Not everyone is that fortunate. I get uh, it. You know what I mean? Not I have, to, I have to be reminded of that all the time. I mean, yeah. you know, one of the guys in my band who's been real emphatic about not wanting to do anything. Like yeah. I, I asked the guys, do you want to, like, I can get us a place big enough. I might be able to get us an outdoor place, but I can get us one of our bigger clubs is offered. Like we just want to come, you know, the horns can be down on the floor. The rhythm section can be in whatever configuration of the stage. Yep. You know, we can use the sound. Like, do you, do you want to play just to, just to just see to each play. other? We don't have to stream it. We don't have to yeah. do anything. Just to hang. And this one guy, like, you know, I got to say, I've got a 92-year-old mother. I, I, there's just no reason for me to induce any risk at all at this yep. point in time. And then, you know, one of the other guys was like, look, we don't have anything coming up. You know, we're not going anywhere, Paul. You know, we're, we're going to just have to suffer through all this together and, you know, sacrifice together. And then, you know, when it's time to pick up the pieces, we'll all pick up the pieces together. And actually, that's, that's a, that is, that's a good word. opening song for your first gig back, by the way. Pick up the pieces together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Add together. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I don't know. You know, it, it's that is one of the weirdest things is like having to turn off your mind. You know, I, I see a, I see bands fizzling out through this. I mean, do you? Oh yeah. Uh, it will. It, in fact, I, I hate to to say this, but it will surprise me if Fling survives this. To be perfectly oh. honest, yeah. I mean, like I said, Fling didn't come into this in the strongest position, right? Like we we'd had this issue with Aaron sort of being detached. He was always there for gigs and 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 all of that, but it wasn't like the the grinding machine that Fling was five years ago or something like that. So. Um, it wouldn't surprise me. And, and I've seen cracks in the armor with, uh, other bands that I'm in too, just because for, for a variety of reasons, but the, the big one that's sort of at the core of it is everybody's kind of like on edge right now. And it's easy to get, to take that frustration and focus it at like, Oh, this, you know, it sucks. We can't do this. And then just let it go. You know, what, what's the point kind of thing. And, and that mentality will, will, will blow these things up because there's no, you know, a, a working band has glue, right? If you've got gigs, even if it's just one gig a month, like yeah. that's glue right there. Regularity. Yeah. yeah. You don't have that glue right now. Monkey fist. Well, remember, I feel like I'll survive this. That's the, that's the one I'm, I, I'm, I'm not worried about. I mean, I, I would, yeah. be, I would be bummed if it fell apart, but I don't think it will. I, we're, everybody's in good shape. It's like, you know, everybody understands. We're pretty fortunate. Just about, I think about 30 house rocker gigs from this summer got all pushed to next summer. That's good. Most of them, most yeah. of them under contract. So we already have a plan for next summer and we know what's going to happen, you know, through Yeah, all so you've got some glue. Concerts. That's good. We got some glue. Yeah. But um yeah, I I think um paint a picture with me what opening up will look like. So remember, you're going to need you know, data that says you know, it's getting towards safe. You know, you're going to go through this whole thing about vaccines. And, you know, who's going to get them and who's not going to get them and when do enough people have them? And, yeah. You know, I don't, so there's all that. That's, that's just a, it, and all that that means is time, two months, three months, whatever it may be. And then think about that first gig. Who's coming to that first gig or that first month that, you know, the world is quote unquote reopened. If, it, if you use the analogy of the restaurants reopening, right? So, you know, all right. Art and wine festivals, have at it. July and June is your month next year. Yeah, go, right. go for it. Who's going to be I don't, that first? I, I don't think it's not a binary thing, right? I mean, cause we're, it, if, if we use that logic, then I don't know whether here we are reopened or not reopened, but I've played some gigs 
but they're not normal gigs. You know, yeah. there's nothing normal about them, but except that like we're playing music. So there's that normal. And that, let me tell you, that's a wonderful thing. Doing those, those Hedwig shows was, uh, you know, it's, it's like good for the soul, man. Um, mm. you know, and we finished the, we finished the run, the run, the run got extended. As I mentioned, um, I had to miss a weekend and I want to talk about that, but, uh, you know, Saturday night was our final show of, of, of this run and loading out. Normally I hate loading out, especially at that theater. Cause it's up like the, you know, two flights of stairs to get out from the theater and stuff. It's just a pain in the neck. And, um, it was like, oh man, this feels so good. And it, like driving home, I was actually looking forward to like emptying out my car and stacking my drums, but got me a little misty eyed too. Cause it's like, well, mm. when's, when's the next one going to be, you know, it's, it's not like a normal world where it's like, oh yeah, there's always going to be gigs. And we have, we have a couple of, a couple more monkey fist gigs coming up, but, but then it's, you know, then it starts getting cold here and the theater I felt safe doing. It's a big room. Uh, they were able to keep people distant. Everybody involved was obsessed with being tested. You know, all of those things. There's no such thing as 100% safe, but it was it was it was certainly at least safe enough, if not safer than than I needed to to go there, um, which was good. But I don't see that happening in clubs uh, this winter. You know, so even in, even if we get this these you know few little gigs outdoors here that we can play. Um, uh, I don't, you know, I, I, it's not going to happen in November and December and January and February and March and April, right? Like there's going to be a six month period where that's going to be a slow thing. And I don't, yeah. I don't, I, you know, and I, I, I don't know that vaccine is the answer. It would certainly be great if it is, but we don't have it yet. And we don't know anything about it yet because there isn't one. There's many of them being developed, obviously. And, and you know, you can research all of that, but we don't have one. So the only thing we have is testing, socially distancing and contact tracing. Like those are the things we have right now and and masks. Right. I mean, and, and some combination of the four of those makes things a lot safer than a combination of none of them. Right. You know, and so I think that's the gradual reopening that we will see. And and you guys will get mm -hmm. more of that there than than we will here. And especially you moving further south in California like that, that might actually be a good thing because you might have some outdoor gig opportunities, you know, year round. I don't I forget how how warm it gets down there. But um, but I don't know, you know, maybe maybe yeah. there's there's opportunities for for y'all that we don't have. Oh. I just think it's going to be more. Well, there's, it's not like we can play outdoors in the winter because okay. it rains. But um, got it. But, oh, uh, got it. Okay. I don't know. It it feels like we're. You're right. What, what did I read today? That the fastest, you know, major epidemic vaccine ever developed was mumps, and that was a four year process from right. beginning to delivery or something. Four years. Mm -hmm. So you know, it feels like. There's a certain amount of fatigue, and yes. with that fatigue, people are like, "Well, you know, whatever. You know, if I get it, I get it." You know, unfortunately, is where people may end up. Yeah, you know, their mind drifting to totally, and it'll feel. I think it feels like we're going to get to a place where the governments will have a hard time, harder time than they're having now. Yep, enforcing, you know, you know, getting people to make decisions, and it will be sort of a flu like situation. There are things out there in the world that kill people. Yep. You know, but you know, it, it, again, there doesn't seem like there's good science or good logic behind that. Cause you can get a flu shot, which will help you with many parts of flu season. Right. Not, not everything, not a hundred percent. No, you know, that's, that's, right. that's the, that's the yeah. difference now. It's like, it's more contagious. Yep. Right. It, it's more fatal. <laughs> it, yep. It's uh, you know, so that those are the things that we still need yeah, and you know, again, you never know elections we never, and you know, well, and you never know. Like that, and well, and and they're learning a lot. Like like you said before, every day they're learning new things about this. And what people know, and what people are, what scientists know, and what scientists are predicting now is very different from what scientists were predicting back, you know, in in March. And some it, in some cases for the better and in some cases for the worse. Right. But yeah. it changes. And I don't it's like you can go research that on your own. You don't want to hear about science from some music nerds, but um, it, it, like it, it changes. So, I, you know, even three months from now, this con we might look back on this episode and be like, man, look how stupid we were, you know, and and I and we could like it could be. 
you know, people are dying like flies and look how stupid we were. Or it could be, wow, look at this thing's over. Look how stupid we were. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. either one of those yields that result. And we don't we just don't know. So I um, right, so tell your cancellation story. Yeah. So I had we had two monkey fist gigs last week that got canceled uh, essentially because of covid one the the venue canceled it was our our football field gig that we had done one of them uh in the past they wanted to charge for this one they hadn't put together enough of uh the scenario to to be able to like charge people and do it in a socially distanced way so they pulled the plug which i was very proud of them you know and and we would have if if they hadn't if they had like not that they would have made bad choices but if they had we would have been like out and then the next night was at a restaurant uh, that had cases, multiple cases of COVID in their staff. And it sure looked at the time that we had to make the decision and still now uh, that they were trying to cover that up. And we were given the option to bail out from the gig. The booking agent that we work with is a fantastic guy. And he said, look, you know, I want to tell you what I know, which at the time wasn't nearly all the information because he didn't have it all. But he's like, here's what yeah. I know. Um, you will have there will be no negative repercussions for me if you bail. This was on a Thursday for a gig on a Friday. Normally, you know, you bail on a booking agent the day before a gig. You get moved to the bottom of the list, you know, but yep. but he was like, I got to worry about your safety. So here's what I know. It's your call. You want to do the gig? Absolutely. Go ahead and do it. But if you don't, no problem. And we were like, it was a very easy decision. It was like, oh, yeah, no, 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 no. That's not going to happen. So what that meant, though, as I said, we were away last week and uh, they extended the Hedwig run. They didn't check with me on the schedule when they extended the Hedwig run um, because I they, they thought I was available. But um, I didn't know they were extending it. So there was a little bit of confusion there. And there was a weekend that included that Friday for that gig. And then a Saturday when we were away that I could not do. And so they found a drummer um, that uh, that was able to fill in this guy, Tommy, who actually had done Hedwig, I think at, at the same theater with um, with Constantine Maroulis actually as, as Hedwig, you know, 13 years ago or something like that. Uh, so he knew the show f well enough. It's one of those shows that sort of ev every different production is radically different, but the songs are mostly the same. And so he had scheduled, you know, they scheduled a rehearsal with him on Friday afternoon, and then he was going to play the Friday and Saturday gigs. Um, well, you know, Thursday afternoon comes around and I know that I'm not playing on Friday night. And so I, I sent Tommy a text and I'm like, Hey man, just so you know, I'm going to plan to come to the rehearsal tomorrow to, to sort of coach him through. I wrote him a book of all of the things that like, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> this is not one of those. This, yeah. Well, I felt, you know, I felt responsible. Even though it wasn't my fault that this thing got extended, you know, but still I didn't want him to, I didn't want to leave anybody hanging. So I like, there's, it, this isn't one of those shows where it's all written out. In fact, none of it's written out. So it was like, okay, here's what you do. You know, when this happens in this song, do this, you know, count to, and then play this or, you know, whatever. I mean, just all this, this crazy book of, you know, it was like a five page email that I wrote. And, um, I said, I'll be there. I, you know, I can be there for that, re for that rehearsal. And he's like, wait a minute. So you don't need me for Friday night? And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. The gig's yours, man. Like you're scheduled. You should do the gig. It's no problem, but I'm going to be there in case you have questions during the rehearsal. He's like, no, 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 man. Wait a minute. He's like, I appreciate what you're trying to do. You're being cool. You know, they booked me for the gig. You don't want to step on my toes. That's awesome. He's like, so you get your brownie points for that. He said, but you and I both know that this shows better with you playing drums than it is with me playing drums. It says it has nothing to do with, you know, it doesn't matter if which one of us is a better drummer. You are the drummer for this show. You know, this show, the people in the house are going to get a better show if you play it versus me. And I thought, well, he, you're not wrong. Like, you, you know, that, that's true. Like, like there's no way that he could like, especially with this particular show, I drive the bus all night long. So pulling me out meant the rest of the band kind of had to figure out how to, you know, count in songs and when to do these things and all that. He's like, it'd be way better. He's like, so what, what should happen is I should play the rehearsal. I'll watch the show on Friday night, but you play it. He's like, and then I'll do Saturday because you're gone. I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're totally right, man. Like that's absolutely the right way to go. So, um, but it was interesting because 
you know, there was a, a post on cover band confidential and I, uh, uh, maybe it was the cover band central group. I don't know. One of those Facebook groups, somebody asked the, the, the similar scenario. It was like, we booked a drummer for a sub drummer because our drummer couldn't make the gig. Then the gig got rescheduled. Our regular drummer can make it. Should we give the gig to the sub? And like I had answered that post on Thursday morning. So literally the same day and without even thinking about it, I just, I mean, it was like a one sentence answer. I'm like, well, the, the answer is obvious. You pay the sub, but you give the gig to your regular drummer. You want your band to sound its best like that. There's no question, but, yeah. but placed into that scenario, you know, four hours later, I did not see the forest from the trees. Thankfully, Tommy did. So, um, you know, it all worked out, but it was just, it was an interesting thing about subbing etiquette. It sounds like two pros arguing over the right thing to do. And <laughs> yeah, it was totally kind to each other. Right? It was a hundred percent that. Yeah. But, <laughs> but Tommy was right that, you know, you got to look at what the people paying to sit in those seats, uh, deserve and it's, they deserve the best show that it could possibly be. Um, so then it got interesting because, um, I didn't find out any of this until after the show was over on, on, um, Saturday night, but I had texted, you know, Tommy and I was like, Hey man, how, you know, how, how'd the show go? And he's like, Oh yeah. He's like, we were down one guitar player and the guitar player that they were down is the, basically the guy. I mean, as I was leaving on Friday night, I'm like, all right, man, I'm giving you the keys. You drive the bus tomorrow. I'll be back on Friday, you know? And, uh, and so, you know, and I told Tommy, I'm like, follow him. He knows the show. Like you're good. And he wound up having a, a family logistical scenario that pulled him out of it last minute uh, that um, so they had to do it, you know, one sub and one musician down and then they made it through. They said it, you know, it was different, but it worked and the crowd was great, which really helped and all that stuff. But, you know, I got this text like, oh, yeah, it was just, you know, just the four of us. And I'm like, what the? happened mm. <laughs> yeah but but it worked out so that was good you know but cool yeah yeah so so yeah subbing etiquette is an interesting thing what would you do in that scenario like if if you know you hit you subbed out your drummer but then found out your drummer was available you know how would you how would you handle that yeah probably that scenario is is pay the guy you know for the time you put in to get ready and yep. you know and just eat that and you know that's just part of the cost of doing business but you know if if you're always operating under the principle that you never know who's going to be watching you on any, you know, like you want to give a great gig, yeah. but every gig is a possibility to lead to another better gig. And so, yeah, you always want to, you always want to put your best on stage, I think. And so, you know, but definitely pay the guy for pay the, the guy. You put in. Oh, without yeah. question. Yeah. And I told the theater, I'm like, to make sure you pay Tommy for this thing I'm playing tonight. And they're like, well, wait a minute. That's not on you. I'm like, but it's, it doesn't matter. Like this is the, he needs to get paid for this. Like he was, yeah. he, he cleared his schedule. They're like, well, we can pay both of you. I'm like, well, if you want to do that, that's great. But you know, he gets paid first, you know, for sure. As far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but yeah, I, I agree with the basic premise. Like yeah. you always want to put the best thing on stage that you can put that's on. It. It's that simple. Yeah. Yeah, put the best thing on stage, especially these days, man, you know, so, yeah. but all the time, really. So you always want to be performing, right? That's what we, uh, that's, that's what we true. say. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to do a stream tonight. So one, one last time, you know, up here while I'm living in Northern California, I have, I'm going to go over to Simon's house, my house rocker buddy. Yeah. We're going to go to his backyard. We'll definitely be six feet at least apart. And um, I'm thinking about actually singing with a mask on. Huh. Have you done that? I have. We did my first in my first time indoors that wasn't like a you know grocery store or something was at the noise floor studio when we recorded uh, a bitter pill video for New Hampshire uh, Chronicle, and we all wore masks for that and sang and and you know we we were just singing you know harmonies or whatever, but Emily saying everybody wore a mask and Emily sang all the leads into a microphone with the mask and the recording sound freaking great. So it I'll, doesn't cut the highs down or anything like that. It does a little bit, but you know, I mean, you've sung into a windscreen before it just works out. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. All right. It's fine. I mean, yeah, it, and I'm guessing blowing that air though, it must get a little hot under there and you need to air yourself out a little bit. Right. Yeah. I, you know, I found, so, um, I have, I, a friend of mine, he's always in like the next business. He's great. He's just this crazy, like driven entrepreneur. 
And uh, and he early on found a way to source KN95 masks um, and and was selling them. And so I I bought a bunch from him. He's based out in Vegas, but you know I, I bought them from him and shipped them to me. And those masks have a lot of structure to them. And so I found that singing really for anything, that's my preferred mask to wear is one of those. So, but I wanted it to look cool on camera. And I had this like checkered mask. That's just a cloth mask. So I actually wore two masks for the studio thing. I wore the KN95, which really kind of built that structure. Then just had the cloth mask over it um, to, you know, to look cool on camera. And it really wasn't all that bad. Um, okay. Yeah. It's not, it's not too bad. I mean, you know, you guys got to both do uh, what you're comfortable with. If you're not facing each other and you're not facing any other humans singing into the air is probably not a terrible thing, but if you're his facing family might, his family might be in the direction of the camera, yeah. you know, in, in yeah. that way. And again, you know, what, what is that? What are they saying? Like singing could be 20 mm. feet of throw. Oh yeah. It could easily. I mean, think about it. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. So we, um, you know, my last kind of comment on on the on a things of the day. You know, so uh, a band local here that I know did a gig this weekend, and they did a backyard party and posted pictures on Facebook. Yeah, they're not wearing masks. People dancing right up in front of them, and not only that, you know, there's there's a horn player and a singing horn player. So I mean, you're basically under a a stream of spit, you know, for the duration of the show. Yeah. And maybe for another conversation, but I got a lot of notes because I've been fairly verbose. And, you know, I posted a, a thing on the House Rockers saying, you know, guys, people asking us if we're going to do some stealthy live thing or are we going to stream thing. And I, my basic position was, listen, we are a band that is about getting people together live to, you know, have fun. Yeah. Right? And, you know, when it's safe to do that, we will do that again. And I got a bunch of hate notes and a bunch of love notes, you know, as of course. Of that. So, yep. You know, a lot of people say, don't judge me where I didn't say anything about anybody. Else. It wasn't about you. That's right. Yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't call you out by name, but, but, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And I'm going to do this thing today. And, and uh, I, That's had, cool. I, yeah, I mean, again, I, and I actually, I think I, you get I, to play the, music one, with another human, man. Think about yeah, how fortunate as, as you I'm are. I'm about to ride out of town yeah. and he's my great buddy. And, um, you know, I just wanted to do one last thing, but it, you know, I wanted to, I don't want to look like a hypocrite. I mean, I want it to be as safe as possible. So sure. I said, we have to do it outside. He said, fine, we'll do it outside. Yep. I said, I might sing with a mask. He goes, do, do you do you? And so, uh, yeah. So yeah. I think it'll, it'll, it sh should be okay. And it'll be nice to kind of like get that one last thing. I mean, I'm going to kind of be, unpacking and you know getting my new home set up for another month or so and before I can figure things out. We're going to miss next week's um we you're are. taking a kid to college and I'm yeah. moving so we're going to miss next week, right? It's a crazy week this week and next week. Yeah, man. Yep. Are you going to cry? <laughs> oh, am I going to cry again? You mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> like 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 a baby. <laughs> like a baby many many <laughs> times. Boy. Yeah. Baby boy. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is and this is our our youngest, you know, going yes. off to college and and it'll be this will be very different for us. Not that when we sent our eldest off to college was not difficult. That was terrible. It was off awful. And the, she was in the same town you live. In. She was literally five minutes away, closer than she was <laughs> at high school. But, you know, I and I it was weird because I found myself just like you know, bawling for no apparent reason for like two weeks. It would just like hit me. And finally I'm like, what? I feel like I'm grieving. What am I grieving for? Like she's like, she, not only did she not die, like she's doing the thing we planned for. Like this is, it couldn't have worked out better. And, um, and I realized I was grieving for, you know, the family life that at the time I thought we would never have again, you know, the four of us mm. in one house, and what's been, you know, the silver lining to this, this quarantine is that the four of us have, you know, been living in the same house again in, with a similar dynamic. I mean, it's an evolved dynamic because we're adults now, but, um, when we've all really enjoyed it, but it makes me realize that, you know, um, a week from tomorrow when we drop Lucas off, it's going to be tough, man. It's like, we get to go through it all over again, but it's worth it. Right. Because we, you know, we got all this great time together, but it's, um, yeah. and, and now with sky going off to school, our daughter, she's only going to be five minutes away, but you know, interacting with each other becomes a, a thing that needs to be really carefully thought through because she's going to be in a different social bubble when we come back. So 
we really are getting kind of like, you know, thrown into the deep end of empty nest. No, I get it. I know you get it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. Well, you yeah. know, your family's awesome and you guys are so close and you know, it, it Luke, Lucas has worked his butt off to yeah. give himself the opportunities to choose and yep. he chose a great school and you know, it reflects well on all the whole Hamilton family. So I personally want to wish Sky a great year this year and good luck to Lucas as he goes off on his adventure. Yeah. And good luck to, you know, yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. the parents, you know, who made it all happen. So, yeah. You know, yeah. Kudos to you guys. Thanks. Yeah, Fine work. Fine work, young man. Thank you. It's not going to be easy, but it's, it's, it, <laughs> but it, it's, you know, again, it's, it's how it's supposed to be, but yeah. Oh no, we'll definitely cry. We, I booked a <laughs> dinner for that night and, um, and I put in the reservation, you know, I'm like, uh, you will be dealing with two people who hours earlier, you know, just became empty nesters. So we can't be, uh, responsible for our fragile emotional states or something. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's how it's going to be, but it's, you know, it's how it's supposed to be. Like, let's, it's, let's yeah. hope it all works out that way. That's really kind of the, the thing is let's, let's hope everybody gets to do some level. Well, we'll of, both report back a week from Monday. Yeah. A week that? from Monday. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Cool. All right, folks. Well, that's what we got for today. Unless you got anything else, my friend. I'm good, brother. All right. Well, folks, that's how we do it. We, uh, we're always performing. Make sure you're always performing. Always. Always. Get your band together on a Zoom call. It's a good thing. Keep talking to each other.